So here we're going to show you how to use the Digital Explorer or Binary Explorer board um, to design some simple circuit. And in particular, I'll be showing the seven segment display. So to start with, um, we start with our digital trainer simple.zip, um, which we had before. And as always, we need to extract all the files somewhere. So you can either open it and hit extract all files or right click it, extract all. And wherever it does them, um, you can save that somewhere. If you want to save this project, you have to save the whole folder. Um, so wherever that puts it, and you can move it to your home directory or whatever else. So we'll close that. Um, and then when you open this folder, it should actually open automatically. To s open the Xilinx tools, again, we can just open this .xise, and it will open the project navigator. Just move it over here. Up till now, we've been using simulations to do everything, so this time we're actually going to do it with implementation. So at the top here, there's two options, simulation and implementation. So we'll be clicking over on the implementation tab instead of simulation. Um, we still have this IO connections that schematic as before, so if we double click that, we get the display we're already used to. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to place down a symbol. And this symbol will appear here in the categories. Um, it should be the second one from the top because it's a special symbol that I've created. And this is a binary coded decimal to um, seven segment display driver. So put one of those down and also put down under general two grounds. Or you can just put down one ground actually and connect two things to it. So I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Um, the first thing we're going to do is the two commons for the seven segment displays we're going to connect to ground. So the common is sort of the, you can think of it as the negative or um, the cathode of the display. And we need to connect them to ground so that the power is somewhere to go. Then we just connect each of the A to B, A to A, B to B, and so forth from the seven segment driver um, to the seven segment display. So if you do each one here. And then for the inputs, just connect switch zero to D zero, so that's data zero line, so D zero. We go up here to switch one and switch two to D1, um, and so forth. Oops. And you have to be careful. If you just click off to the side, it won't actually connect, so make sure you fully connect them. Sometimes it takes a bit of clicking to do it. Um, so if it's not connecting, I find it helpful to just move this over, and it'll connect that way. Um, you can check because the boxes should disappear if it's connected. So again, we'll go up, D3 and the fourth input. So as we remember from before, binary coded decimal, um, even though there's four lines there, binary coded decimal only goes up to nine because we have zero through nine in the decimal system. Um, so this is that's the complete schematic. So I'll just zoom out. So we're just placing that one part in the middle and connecting it up to the outputs and to the inputs. So as before, you can close the schematic and again, we're in implementation mode, not simulation. So you need to make sure you click here. Um, when you have this ioconnections.sch highlighted, don't highlight the other ones, just that line there. Um, you can double click on the line that says implement design, or you can right click and hit run. So if we double click that, this is going through and turning the design into something we can download on our board. Um, so we'll wait for that to complete. And we'll go through a few different steps and hopefully doesn't give you any errors. Um, so we have to wait until the line generate programming file is complete. And once that pops up, it'll also give you the summary of how many resources you've used in the device. Um, so if you're doing a bigger design, you can start to get an idea of how full the device is. Anyway, once that's done, we minimize the ISE tool. And we go back to that same folder. It has to be the same one you opened from. Um, and before we program the board, plug it into the USB. You should see the activity LED blink 
on and then off. I'll just show you again. So the power LED will come on. The activity will blink on then off. If the activity stays on, um, that's not good. So something's wrong. And you might have to um, replug the board. You can try plugging it back in again. You also, when we're running the device, there's this CPLD reset switch here, which if it's mounted, make sure it's at the bottom in the zero position. When it's in the one position, um, all the drivers are disabled with the current design. So we then go back to that folder uh, and we run something called program. So we look for, there it is. So program or program.bat, depending on your computer settings, might not have the extension and you just double click on it. And so this is going to run a whole bunch of stuff. It should take um, more than a few seconds to run. If it opens and then is done right away, that's bad. Something's probably happened. It might not have connected to the driver. Um, so you might see an error printed in here or printed somewhere. Um, so now, it, right now it's programming the device and you can see the activity LED turns on in this case. Right there. Um, and the software has told us scan device output matches expected values. Press any key to continue. So you can look up and you see there's no other errors. So we just hit enter. So at this point, it's actually programmed the device. And we can see the seven segment display has lit up. Um, again, if this reset line was high, then the display is off. So make sure it's low. Um, now what we can see is actually that these inputs over here are the inputs to that, the binary coded decimal input. So for example, if I put in decimal one, um, it's, the display is displaying one, two, two, three, etc. Um, so what it's actually doing is decoding this input and displaying it here. So this is one building block of something if you were making a counter or a clock or anything like that. Um, and you can see how this is working. So one aspect of this is that the design is only accepting valid inputs up to nine, which would be the highest decimal number. If we put 10 in here, um, so 1010, zero, zero, we can see there's some invalid output. So anything above nine gives us, we don't know exactly what, because when this, um, the block was designed inside the CPLD, it was optimized to reduce the amount of gates. And we specifically didn't care what the higher um, inputs do. So just for reference, the CPLD is sort of on the back here, this silence chip there. And um, so that's how we download a design to this digital explorer board using the Xilinx ISE tools to create the design and then just download it to that. So it's very simple, much easier than wiring it up on the breadboard or anything like that.